Equipped with some of the deadliest weapons and able to accommodate over 300 crew members who live and work on the ship, a U.S. Navy destroyer is no ordinary ship. It is a symbol of maritime supremacy, the fortress of power, and a force to be reckoned with. As suggested by its name, the vessel quite literally destroys anything that comes to threaten its legacy. Known as the Greyhounds of the U.S. Navy, destroyers are equipped with state-of-the-art combat systems, making them virtually impossible to mess with. But given its unimaginable power, do you ever wonder what's life like for the courageous crew members who call these mighty vessels their home? Do they ever let their guard down? Imagine waking up each day to the fury of the sea knowing that at any moment an enemy ship might appear on the horizon with all guns blazing. Now before we even discover different aspects of life aboard a U.S. Navy destroyer, it's crucial to start from the basics. What is a destroyer and what role does it play for the U.S. Navy? Destroyers are one of the most integral parts of the U.S. Navy fleet. A destroyer is a fast, maneuverable, and heavily armored warship. It possesses multi-mission offensive and defensive capabilities. Destroyers can either operate independently or as part of carrier strike groups, surface action groups, amphibious ready groups, and underway replenishment groups. At the moment, the U.S. Navy has 72 destroyers in its possession. Note that the Arleigh Burke and Zumwalt class destroyers specifically are equipped with state-of-the-art systems. To give the full picture, these warships are capable of essentially everything. Anti-air warfare, anti-submarine warfare, and anti-surface warfare. To complement this, every modern destroyer's armament consists of surface-to-air missiles, anti-submarine torpedoes, anti-ship missiles, and one or two main guns of about 100 or 130 millimeters, 4 or 5 inches in caliber. With advanced sensors, weaponry, and communication systems at their disposal, destroyers stand poised to detect and neutralize threats in various forms, ranging from hostile vessels and submarines to aircraft and missiles. This capacity for multi-domain warfare enables them to enforce maritime law, ensure safe navigation, and swiftly respond to emergent challenges. Their primary duty is to serve as a quick action force, capable of executing a spectrum of weaponry attacks to respond to potential enemy threats. The mere presence of these U.S. Navy destroyers can act as a deterrent to potential adversaries. Simply knowing that a powerful naval force is operating in a region is enough to discourage hostile actions and help maintain stability. They can patrol and operate in international waters, asserting a nation's interests and demonstrating its capabilities. Also, destroyers are routinely deployed to escort the larger vessels in the U.S. Navy fleet, such as aircraft carriers. These destroyers can actually be pictured as bodyguards in this scenario. Now, in order to carry out such crucial mission objectives effectively and to play the role of defending the U.S. Navy fleet, destroyers are built for the job. Range and speed are the major drives behind the overall engineering concept, because these vessels obviously need to swiftly navigate through the seas. They are powered by a number of turbines, pushing the heavily armored ships to speeds of up to 45 kilometers per hour. This naval powerhouse covers the distance of a football field in a mere one and a half seconds, which would leave us mere mortals struggling to catch our breath just at the thought of it. These colossal vessels are 500 feet to 600 feet long, depending on unique models of different types of destroyers. This might appear to be a large vessel, but it's less than half the size of an aircraft carrier. Note that destroyers are designed primarily for combat operations rather than cargo transport. Therefore, they don't have an outstanding displacement, your weight-carrying capacity. For instance, Zumwalt-class destroyers have a displacement of 15,656 long tons, which is roughly the equivalent to the weight of around 6,000 average cars. Definitely not bad. Moreover, destroyers normally have a very sleek hull design, which is not just for aesthetics, it's a testament to its hydrodynamic efficiency. 
Its shape reduces water resistance, allowing the vessel to glide through the waves with minimal effort, which is obviously crucial, since the ship is made for combat. On top of that, these vessels incorporate a wide range of technology, and it's shown in their price tags. For instance, the flagship of the Zumwalt-class destroyers is estimated to be between a staggering six and eight billion dollars. This is because the US Navy leaves no stone unturned when it comes to building its naval fleet. For this reason, these vessels are equipped to the teeth with advanced navigation systems, radars, and powerful weapons. Now, this must have given you a strong idea of what a destroyer is and what role these warships play in the US Navy. Now, let me bring your attention to the challenges of living on these vessels, miles and miles away from land. It's not like what you'd expect. Life aboard a destroyer. The challenges. As you may expect, life on a US Navy destroyer can be pretty hectic, considering that the course of events might change at the drop of a hat. Destroyers are often deployed in open waters where they can encounter rough seas with high waves and strong currents. Not to forget the extreme weather conditions, such as storms, hurricanes, and typhoons that may appear on the horizon uninvited. Obviously, these conditions can put significant stress on the ship's structure and systems, making navigation and stability rather challenging. Most importantly, it can affect the speed of destroyers, which is a major player in executing any mission, whether it's acting as a bodyguard or even engaging in combat. Just like the name suggests, destroyers are capable of unsurmountable damage to any entity that tries to test them. But living under the constant threat of enemy attacks alone can take a toll on one's nerves, as you can expect. Imagine living out in the vast ocean, miles away from land. Isn't that already a bit intimidating? Now pair that with living on a vessel loaded with weaponry. Then add the danger of being under attack. For this reason, life at sea is like a chess game where every move counts. One momentary mishap can result in chaos on board. But fear not, this is where the US Navy's dedicated professional crew steps in. These brave men and women sail into the abyss with unwavering determination. Fun fact, an average US Navy destroyer accommodates about 300 crew members, and they're all trained with extensive skills and expertise to operate and maintain the complex systems aboard the ship. These crew members undergo rigorous training in various areas to ensure the smooth functioning of the destroyer. We'll dive deeper into this very soon. But first, let's step into the shoes of these crew members who steer this Titan through unpredictable waters and see what challenges life holds for them at sea, day in and day out. Life as a crew member on a destroyer is a demanding yet fulfilling experience that centers around teamwork, camaraderie, and meeting challenges head-on. As life on a destroyer comes with unique challenges, the crew's adaptability and resilience are tested under these conditions. The operational tempo can shift rapidly from routine tasks to high-alert situations, requiring crew members to transition seamlessly and make split-second decisions. Crew members have distinct responsibilities based on their roles, which range from operating advanced systems to maintaining critical equipment. Close collaboration among these roles is essential for the ship's smooth functioning, especially during combat situations and emergencies. On a normal day, they participate in rigorous training drills, covering combat scenarios, damage control, and emergency response. As you might expect, continuous training is the cornerstone of life on a destroyer. These drills ensure they're well prepared for real-world situations. Crew members regularly engage in drills and simulations to hone their skills in combat scenarios, damage control, and emergency response. At this point, you must be wondering what life is like for the crew members aside from their professional capacity. Do they go to their rooms while not on duty? Well, to your surprise, crew members on a destroyer don't have their separate personal spaces. Instead, they live in compact living quarters called berthing areas, sharing bunks in tight spaces. For good reasons, living quarters and recreational spaces are not the main priority in the design and construction of destroyer ships. Crew cabins don't come with many facilities. 
They consist of bunk beds, usually accommodating over 20 people in one room, who have limited access to other facilities, such as shower spaces and toilets. Sharing one toilet with 10 other people itself is a challenge. On a positive note, a strong sense of camaraderie forms as the crew members live and work in close quarters for long periods of time. The shared hardships during long deployments create bonds that extend beyond professional relationships. The ship is like a second home to sailors, and their fellow mates are the closest thing to family they can hold on to during hard times. The limited off-duty time that crew members get often gives them a chance to relax, catch up on personal tasks, socialize, and sometimes enjoy recreational activities. Yeah, that's a thing on board these dangerous vessels. Kind of ironic, right? The Effects of Physical and Mental Health of Crew Before we continue, I'd like to take a moment to ask for your support and respect for our U.S. Navy sailors who risk their lives for our nation. Please show your appreciation by leaving a blue heart in the comments below the video. Now, let me bring your attention to the mental and physical health of crew members because that's just as important. As we know that the environmental conditions at sea are not in alignment with what our bodies normally are used to, this might lead to some inconvenience for crew members or even serious health issues on rare occasions. As expected, the mental and physical well-being of the crew comes as a great challenge while living out at sea. Firstly, and the most basic of all factors, the constant motion of a ship can lead to seasickness, plus physically demanding tasks, confined spaces, and uneven surfaces can cause muscle strain and joint pain. And of course, the constant exposure to salt water can contribute to skin irritations. Moreover, things can get pretty clustered at times, leading to poor ventilation, which could possibly result in respiratory problems in severe cases, particularly among the crew members who smoke or have pre-existing conditions. Note that training in the U.S. Navy starts way before they board the ship. Their bodies are trained enough to adapt to the challenging sea conditions and have a unique lifestyle at the destroyer. Regular physical drills and exercises not just keep their bodies fit, but also build strength and stamina in them to deal with any emergency. Modern destroyers accommodate the facility of a gym also. Along with that, there are medical experts on board, along with various medical supplies to treat any patient on board. Apart from the ranging physical health challenges, the sea can take a toll on the mental and psychological health of the crew as well. Participating in intense missions, including combat and humanitarian efforts, can expose crew members to emotional stressors. On top of this, being in high-risk situations can lead to post-traumatic stress symptoms and emotional strain when things get rough. Another factor is extended deployment, which often means separation from families for prolonged periods. The absence from important life events and the challenges of maintaining long-distance relationships can also contribute to emotional distress among crew members. Taking all of this into account, it's worth highlighting that the U.S. Navy has recognized the importance of mental health and provides access to counseling service and mental health professionals. Moreover, naval leadership promotes a culture of open communication, encouraging crew members to discuss their mental health concerns without fear of stigma. They're provided with a strong support system, which goes to show that the U.S. Navy is well aware of these concerns and goes the extra mile to make sure that every U.S. Navy personnel's health remains a top priority. Speaking of which, let us know in the comments below, how can morale and mental well-being be maintained for crew members on board U.S. Navy destroyers? We would love your valuable insight, and we're sure you'll come up with some excellent suggestions. Rigorous Training and Protocols Moving on, it goes without saying that the fate of a warship pretty much lies in the hands of its sailors. Be it a deadly storm or an enemy attack, the U.S. Navy prepares its crew members for the worst-case scenario. As the saying goes, practice makes perfect. Rest assured, the U.S. Navy crew lives by this principle. Therefore, on a normal day, the crew participates in various drills and performs a number of other exercises, including weapons training, using advanced weapon systems on destroyers, firefighting drills, and damage control procedures. Let's have a look at some of the drills, procedures, and protocols that the U.S. Navy crew is trained to carry out under any given circumstances. 
The most basic protocol that each crew member is assigned to carry out is watch duty. Watch duty is an integral part of maintaining the ship's operations and safety. Every member of the crew is assigned to different watch rotations to ensure continuous coverage throughout the day and night. Watch duty involves monitoring specific areas, systems, or functions of the ship and being prepared to respond to any situation that may arise during their designated shift. For instance, in combat information center watches, crew members monitor radar and sensor data to detect and track potential threats such as enemy ships, submarines, or aircraft. It's common sense why this is so important. Next, to prepare crew members for any emergency related to unexpected outbursts of fire, fire drills are conducted twice a month or as much as practicable, depending on the situation. This is also when emergency fire pumps are tested to make sure teams can combat the fire either on deck or in the engine room. Moreover, crew members go through extensive combat system training, where they learn how to operate and maintain advanced combat systems, including missile launchers, radar systems, sonar equipment, and communication systems. However, not every crew member needs to be an expert at these advanced machines, but they must have the basic knowledge so that if the need arises, they can operate different systems of the destroyer. A quick point that's rather interesting. Crew members even practice procedures for abandoning the destroyer safely in case of extreme emergencies. This includes donning life vests, boarding life rafts, and following evacuation protocols. However, such protocols were thankfully never actually needed and surely won't be needed either. Most importantly though, the medical training of each crew member is crucial. They must be able to carry out basic medical procedures, such as first aid and CPR. This not only prepares them to take care of themselves, but also to help other crew members in distress. It's all teamwork, remember? Also, through all of these emergency procedures, establishing effective communication is essential to form coordination with other crew members. Speaking of communication, crew members also practice the use of emergency communication devices, such as radios, satellite phones, or emergency beacons, to relay distress signals and request assistance from nearby vessels or authorities. This may sound rather simple, but the technology employed on board the U.S. Navy destroyer is hyper-advanced, so practice is needed regardless. Another aspect of the extensive training on a destroyer is something that's known as cross-training. With a selective number of crew members on board, no one can stand on the sideline. Each member is the backbone of the destroyer. Unlike aircraft carriers or bigger vessels, destroyers don't have separate departments for each and every task on board. Therefore, most of the members are cross-trained. This approach enhances their versatility and adaptability and ensures that members can proficiently handle multiple roles and responsibilities. For instance, someone who usually works with radars might also learn how to put out fires. This way, if there's an emergency, they can help in different ways and make the ship safer. It's like having more skills in case something unexpected happens. Tasks and Duties of the Crew From the bridge to the engine room, the deck to the combat information center, Every individual plays a vital role in keeping the destroyer running in its true spirit. It's an all-hands-on-deck situation. Each crew member is assigned a set of duties to perform in order to ensure a harmonious and well-organized environment. There's also a hierarchy of power and authority based on official designations of members on board to keep everything in check. The highest-ranking officer on a destroyer is the commanding officer, or CO who is the modern-day captain of the ship. The CO holds the highest authority and responsibility for the ship's operations, crew, and overall mission. They make critical decisions, manage the crew's activities, and ensure the ship's readiness for various tasks, including combat and routine operations. After that comes the executive officer, or XO, who is the ship's second-in-command, and they often create a bridge between the crew and the commands issued by the CO. They are the ultimate multitaskers, ensuring that the ship's engines run smoothly on both the operational and morale fronts. Furthermore, navigation officers are responsible for planning and charting the ship's courses. They operate GPS systems on the ship, 
including sonars and radars to avoid any navigational hazards to the ship and ensure a swift and smooth way through the rough seas. Now let's proceed to the Combat Information Center, or the CIC. Here, the Combat Systems Officer monitors radars, detects threats, and coordinates weapon systems. They're pretty much like the eyes and ears of the destroyer. Meanwhile, the engineering department of a destroyer is filled with technicians and mechanics. They take care of a number of problems, ranging from oil leaks to more sophisticated systems such as the electrical and propulsion infrastructure. As you can imagine, these systems are vast, and it's no easy job figuring out what's wrong when things go south. This simply proves how well trained the crew on board of a destroyer is. Heading up to the deck, we meet the deck crew with ropes and rigging as their toolkit. Even though the flight deck of a U.S. Navy destroyer is very different from what we see on a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier, it certainly doesn't mean that there's any less to worry about. The deck crew is actively ensuring the safe arrivals and departures of aircraft, mostly helicopters, plus they've got an amazing view of their surroundings which could play in their favor when a threat is around. And what about refueling? Not the aircraft, the crew members. They need to refuel also, right? Well, in the mess hall, culinary specialists whip up meals that boost crew morale and energy. But it's not just cooking, it's about creating a sense of home for everyone on board. Crew members eat three main meals per day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Plus, note that there's a fourth meal for the night watch standards at around about midnight. All in all, remember that the duties of the crew members are not limited to what we've covered. Many other key functions are performed by highly skilled crew members of the damage control team maintenance crew and medical personnel. Crew members work tirelessly, around the clock 24-7, ensuring the ship's smooth operation and readiness. It's tough to really commend them for their dedication. Maintenance and Inspection Destroyers, as compared to other ships, are more prone to enduring damage considering the nature of their missions. Harsh weather conditions at sea and enemy attacks can significantly damage different systems of destroyers. Therefore, detailed maintenance, inspection, and repair are carried out regularly. The U.S. Navy spends millions on maintaining its destroyers. Speaking of maintenance, in general, the procedures are divided into two types, preventative maintenance and corrective maintenance. As the name suggests, preventative maintenance is all about staying one step ahead of the problem and preventing it from happening. It is also known as planned maintenance. Let's have a look at some of the procedures that the crew members perform as part of their daily duties in this regard. Firstly, vibration sensors are used to monitor rotating machinery like engines and missile systems. By analyzing vibrations, engineers can detect imbalance or misalignment issues, preventing potential breakdowns. In addition to that, regular oil samples are taken from engines and other equipment to analyze contaminants, wear metals, and fluid conditions. This helps to detect early signs of potential problems. Moreover, ultrasonic testing techniques are used to detect flaws or defects in materials using high-frequency sound waves. It's employed for inspecting welds, pipes, and structural components. Also, techniques like magnetic particle testing and dye-penetrant testing are used to identify surface cracks, defects, or flaws in critical components. Instruments and sensors are also regularly calibrated to maintain accurate reading and measurements. This is crucial for navigation, communication, and the weapon systems. Then come the regular old routine checks such as lubrication, hull inspection for corrosion or cracks, cleaning of the machinery, and so on. It's no doubt that the crew members perform these tasks with religious dedication as part of their routine duties. After these detailed inspections, almost no room is left for any kind of wear and tear. But unfortunate incidents can happen in the sea, especially enemy attacks that come unannounced. In such cases, corrective maintenance comes into play, which is not cheap, frankly speaking. It can cost an arm and a leg. Corrective maintenance for an Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyer costs a whopping $81 million. For this very reason, regular preventative maintenance is crucial so that unanticipated repairs are not too pricey at the end of the day. However, to perform certain procedures, destroyers are required to be brought out of the sea into a narrow basin-like structure on the shore. This is where extensive maintenance procedures are performed that include disassembling, inspecting, and repairing 
and reassembling various systems and components of a ship. This is just as important as the maintenance that goes on out in the ocean, maybe more. Have any of you ever seen or worked on a destroyer? We'd love to learn from you and enjoy your experiences. Please let us know in the comments below if you'd like to share your stories with us. And don't forget to leave a blue heart to show your respect for all US Navy crew members. Advanced Technologies and Combat Capabilities At the forefront of naval warfare, destroyers are instruments of destruction for war. US Navy destroyers are equipped with advanced offensive and defensive firepower and combat capabilities that make them formidable assets in modern naval warfare. In addition to that, they have advanced cutting-edge technologies on board, including high-range radar and navigation systems. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Let's have a look at some of these impressive systems and capabilities found on a US Navy destroyer. Kicking things off, the US Navy has heavily invested in the Zumwalt-class destroyer, which is a stealth ship equipped with stealth technology, specifically designed to avoid reflecting radar waves back in the direction they came from and making itself virtually undetectable. This simply helps the ship to hide from enemies. It's undoubtedly no less than a magic trick. These ships also use integrated electric propulsion. Some of the advantages of using this technology are freedom of placement of the engine, less noisy ships, reductions in weight and volume, and the list goes on. Note that the system uses electric transmission instead of mechanical transmission, which eliminates the need for clutches and reduce or eliminates the use of gearboxes. And, well, none of those mechanical noises, too. Now let's look into the advanced radar systems on board these ships that can detect anything along the lines of an enemy aircraft, a surface vessel, or even underwater objects such as submarines. As an example, the AN Spy 6 radar system is a true marvel. Its enhanced detection capability allows sailors to find and track enemy missiles and fighter jets. It's also called a next generation radar system because of its long range ballistic missile defense and air defense. Next, the AN SQS 53C sonar system is your submarine detector, listening for underwater sounds and helping track those hidden undersea threats. It has an unimaginable range of 18 to 64 kilometers. This system can essentially detect and avoid all sorts of enemy submarines, floating, tethered, or bottom attacked mines, and also torpedoes. Now that we know how enemy vessels and potential attacks are detected with cutting edge radar and sonar systems, let's take a look at the powerful weapons that are used in response to these threats. It's absolutely no surprise that US Navy destroyers are loaded with the latest cutting edge weapon systems. That's what they're made for. So, almost all US Navy destroyers are equipped with Phalanx close in weapon systems, which is a point defense weapon system for detecting and destroying short range incoming missiles and enemy aircraft. It's an automated rapid fire computer controlled gun, typically mounted on top of the vessel. The CIWS is so good, it can shoot incoming 155 mm artillery shells, rockets, and even mortars out of the sky. US destroyers also have advanced ballistic missile defense systems, like Standard Missile 3. This system includes special radars and sensors that can actively scan the sky and see simultaneously to find any dangerous missiles coming toward the ship. To put things into perspective, a destroyer could launch its own missiles to shoot up and hit an incoming missile before it even comes close. It's like shooting a bullet to hit another bullet in the sky. Sounds interesting. Another example of a powerful defense system is the Aegis Combat System, which is the sea-based component of the Ballistic Missile Defense System. This system is integrated into certain US Navy Ticonderoga-class cruisers and Arleigh Burke-class guided missile destroyers. It can detect, track, and engage multiple targets simultaneously. It's basically capable of defending against air, surface, and subsurface threats. In other words, nothing can easily make it through and attack a US Navy destroyer. Interestingly though, one crucial firepower of US destroyers is their ability to launch surface-to-air long-range missiles. 
These missiles are launched through computerized systems which are capable of deadly precision. For instance, U.S. destroyers can carry Tomahawk land attack cruise missiles, which have a super long range and are capable of precision strikes against targets on land or at sea. It can strike targets 1,600 kilometers away. Plus, its sophisticated guidance system allows it to switch targets in real time while in flight. But we haven't even discussed one of the most destructive weapon systems of them all, the anti-submarine torpedoes. These are used to detect and engage both submarines and surface vessels. Torpedo tubes are usually stored on or below the deck of the destroyer, and they are usually the most destructive, capable of dismantling a whole enemy attack. For context, torpedoes can cause unrecoverable damage to the armored hull of enemy ships. They can even pierce through a submarine. Life in a Combat Zone since we have already discussed the sophisticated weapon system, you must be wondering what it's actually like when a warship goes into battle, laced with this hefty count of dangerous weaponry. Well, it's pretty much like a real-life action movie, to say the least. Life on a destroyer during combat is a highly orchestrated and intense experience, characterized by precise procedures, unwavering teamwork, and the constant readiness to respond to threats. Not to forget that a single strike from the enemy can be so lethal that it might destroy the ship itself or put hundreds of lives on board at risk. Let's have a glimpse into what life on a destroyer looks like during combat. It all starts with an alarm blaring throughout the ship. When an enemy attack is imminent, the ship goes on high alert known as battle stations. The crew members rush to their designated stations based on their roles. This can include manning weapon systems, operating radar and communication equipment, or taking up damage control positions. When it gets to this point, the Combat Information Center is the nerve center of the ship. The CIC monitors radar, sonar, and communication data to track and assess threats. CIC personnel coordinate responses, provide real-time information to commanding officers, and guide the ship's actions, all of which combine to ensure the smooth execution of both offensive and defensive measures. Radar and sonar operators work hand-in-hand -hand to closely track potential threats, including enemy vessels, aircraft, and missiles. Their rapid identification and tracking are essential for preparing countermeasures because every second counts. Based on the information provided by these operators, crew members responsible for missile systems like the Aegis and Standard Missile Launches, prepare to engage incoming missiles or aircraft accordingly. They also coordinate with radar and fire control systems to ensure accurate targeting. Close-in Weapon Systems Operators, or CIWS operators, stand ready to engage close-range threats, like anti-ship missiles or even enemy aircraft. The CIWS acts as a final line of defense against incoming targets. When all else fails, the CIWS jumps into action. Meanwhile, Anti-Submarine Warfare Personnel, or ASW personnel, monitor sonar readings to detect and counter enemy submarines. They may deploy torpedoes or other ASW systems to neutralize undersea threats. To ensure the mission's success, navigation officers and helmsmen work closely to steer the ship, adjusting course and speed, to optimize evasion tactics and strategic positioning. This is yet another very crucial element to the entire orchestration. Amidst all this chaos, damage control teams are set ready to respond to any hits the ship might take before all hell breaks loose. They work to contain fires, control flooding, and stabilize the ship's condition to ensure its continued operation. On a lighter note, throughout the process, Effective leadership and communication are very crucial. The commanding officers make decisions based on input from various sources, ensuring coordinated responses to evolving threats. Plus, crew members maintain a heightened sense of situational awareness, continually assessing the battlefield and adapting their actions accordingly. Medical personnel are on standby to provide immediate care to injured crew members. Combat injuries can range from minor to severe, necessitating swift medical attention. 
But after the combat situation ends, everything transitions to a stand-down order, and post-combat procedures are followed, including excessive damage assessment, repair and maintenance, inspection of weapon systems and other critical components that need attention. The Future of Destroyers and Naval Warfare It's worth highlighting that the pursuit of power doesn't just stop for these destroyers. The ultimate goal is to hold all the aces, and the U.S. Navy doesn't bluff its way to the power. With the advancement in technology, the power dynamics at sea are shifting at a rapid rate. The number of ships or manpower is no longer adequate to gauge the combat capabilities of any navy, so to say. In this age, victory hinges on both physical might and technological mastery. The advancements of robotics and artificial intelligence has paved the way for a new era in warfare. AI-driven systems can enhance decision-making, predict equipment failures in advance, optimize maintenance schedules, and aid in data analysis to improve overall operational efficiency. Moreover, increasing automation technologies and the integration of robotics can streamline shipboard operations, reduce manpower requirements, and enhance the ship's ability to perform various tasks with precision. Plus, it significantly reduces the risk of endangering human life, which is arguably the most important. And not just that. Future U.S. Navy surface ships will be operating new generations of highly sensitive long-range high-energy density radar systems, 35 times more precise than existing systems. Another cutting-edge technology in this regard is the electromagnetic warfare system. This new and advanced system can disrupt and disable enemy communication and sensor infrastructures, providing a strategic advantage in electronic warfare environments. Let's not forget about virtual reality, though. With the help of this technology, all the U.S. Navy crew members can be trained to use highly sophisticated weapons without actually operating them for learning purposes. This not just cuts the cost of extensive training programs, but also prepares crew members to deal with complex scenarios during rough seas or war times, something that's tough to replicate in real life. The ultimate goal of integrating these advanced technologies is not to merely increase the efficiency of U.S. Navy destroyers, but to also make the life on board as risk-free as possible. Referring back to our earlier question, have you ever seen or worked on a destroyer? We're genuinely interested in hearing about your experiences. Please share your stories in the comments below. And as a gesture of respect for all U.S. Navy crew members, don't forget to leave a blue heart. Your insights and support can truly add depth to our community. Thank you so much. Ultimately, to sum things up, we must acknowledge that from the deafening roar of engines to the silent vigilance beneath the stars, every moment aboard these vessels is a testament to human perseverance and unwavering dedication. If this video piqued your interest, remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more in-depth coverage and captivating stories about the U.S. Navy's legacy and modern endeavors. Thank you for your support and stay tuned. We'll catch up to you in our next exploration of the U.S. Navy's world.